nothing, if it prints nearly as good as the packaging, we might have a really nice printer here. USB cable, these are highly underrated, definitely use it. 3D printed, what is this, a random tube? We got some spare bed leveling knobs. This is the SD card, saved it. The SD card with the instructions on it, so definitely check it out. Oh, okay. Could be the biggest AC adapter I've ever seen. This could just be part of very rough shipping, but I do have a few concerns or issues with the assembly. The printer is not level. One of the couplers has been stretched, grinding x-axis, and broken PLA brackets. Sook. Later. All right, now when that has been taken care of, we can go ahead and plug in all the connectors. Mount the spool holder and now we are ready to power it up for the first time. All right, it works. Oh no, before we can start printing, before we can start printing, we have to make sure the set axis is the same height on both sides. You know, I always say that the key to good printing quality is in how well you can level the bed, which this one comes with a heated bed, which is great. But just for reference, this is how close the nozzle should be to the heated bed. It just, it just wouldn't be a review if I didn't print the 3D Benchy, so that's what I'm going to do right now. <laughs> Whoa! I'm using Simplify 3D and I'm going to use the standard default settings, nozzle diameter of 0.4. I've not changed too much, primary, <coughs> primary layer height of 0.2, temperature 200, cooling on the third layer, 4 to 5 millimeters a second, uh, just the basic settings to get started on the first print and then you adjust the settings based on the result of your first 3D print. Easy enough. Let's do this. Well, that didn't work. It clearly failed in the y-axis direction, which surprised me because the y-axis bed is not that difficult to move. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drizzle some nice silicone oil on those rails and hopefully that will work itself out. I can't blame it, it looks bloody good, so... It's okay, my first impression is somewhat decent, it got some marks, some blobs, but Overall, I think it turned out pretty good. Eventually, at least, I actually stopped recording because I was getting so many failed prints. And all the problems was just stacking upon each other. The main problem, however, was the rods or the rails of both the X and Y axis got bent, possibly during shipping. Which I could see that the printer had been tested before it had been shipped out. But that took quite a while to get decent enough to start printing. Once I started printing, both the X and Y motors were screaming a little. So I had to adjust the voltage and apply even more lubricant. After all of this, I got it really smooth. So hopefully that shouldn't affect the printing quality in any way. And then the next problem hit me in the face. And now the extruder gear uh, was loose because the set screws was so this time it didn't work because the extruder gear on the extruder motor is loose. I mean, it's an easy fix, but come on. Yeah, I was actually pretty angry at the time. 
very annoying. And after all of this, the filament got stuck in the hot end, so I had to take it all apart. It just turned midnight and I am still working on the printer. And that's where all the failed bench boats came from, but eventually I did get all the kinks worked out and this bench boat was the result. Pretty nice. I then moved on to ABS and the bed was exceptional. It actually reached a very high temperature in a pretty short time as well. The print turned out okay, you can almost see some layer shifting, like the layers has not been perfectly layered on top of each other. At least it's pretty strong. I then tried some high temp MPCS filament and this is usually the hard stuff where you need a high temperature bed with very good adhesion and it did a surprisingly good job. The hot end reached uh, 260 degrees no problem. However, the showstopper here and the reason I was really, really excited for this printer was because of the direct, the, because of the direct drive extruder. It's not uncommon, but it's been a while since I used a good direct drive system. And I was hoping this would perform, and it sure did. This GoPro case was printed in just one hour and 30 minutes at 40 millimeters a second, which just not gonna happen with a Bowden extruder like on a CR10, so that's a big plus. No external fan to cool down the electronics and the connections are, are questionable. But don't forget, it did come with a pretty substantial AC adapter. Literally a brick. It uses a MKS base motherboard version 1.5. Okay. No, but for real, you definitely want to add a fan to get some air circulation in there. So a few things I didn't care for was the fact that the hot end wasn't able to hold a certain temperature. So if I was printing at 205, it could fluctuate between 195 and 215 degrees. What? It didn't come with any filament, so you will have to get that yourself. The LCD interface knob changer is just way too fast and it gets really frustrating to use it. A few things I did like was the heated bed. It was just outstanding, seems to be very high quality. Uh, belt tensioners on X and Y has already been installed, which is really nice. And it prints flexible filament very, very well, and that's probably what I'm gonna use it for. I think it's time to gather what we have experienced and uh, let's make a brief summary. I can't help but thinking that it feels like it's a design that was rushed to the market and uh, got some kinks that is yet to be sorted. The pricing for all of this and what I would consider the deal breaker here, it's listed on Amazon for $580. Combining all of this, would I recommend it? No, I probably wouldn't. I think there is uh, better performing printers for less cash. Would I consider this to be a printer that fits most of you? No, I wouldn't. Time for you to go. I hope you found this review helpful. Thanks for the view. Have a nice day. Bye.